Hello, everyone. I'm Diploma Engineer Bonifasa Ajanimana, a lecturer in geotechnical engineering at IPRC Chigari. I'm with Mr. Bruno, our graduate in construction technology. And we are going to perform the Proctor test in accordance with ASTM D698 and ASTM D1557. For introduction, we have to know why do we perform the Proctor test. The Proctor test is very important, especially in earthworks, for example, for compaction control, for quality control, or choice of quarry for backfill and pavement layers. The Proctor test has different types depending on the compaction effort that is going to be used. That's why we are going to see uh, that there are two types. Uh, there is a standard Proctor test and modified Proctor test. Depending on the maximum size, we are going to use different molds. The molds are, for example, this one. This one uh, is the small one with a diameter of around 10 centimeter, whereas this one is with a diameter of around 15 centimeters. There are mainly three methods that you are going to use. There is method A, where the method depends on the maximum allowable size. For the method A, we are supposed to use the material with the maximum size of uh, 4.75 millimeter, uh, where the oversize can be up to 25%. And the method B is with a lower bore size of 9.5 millimeter, where also the oversize can be up to 25%. And the method C is a lower bore with a maximum size of 19 millimeter, where the maximum oversize can be up to 30%. Now, the sample submitted by the client, after seeing the sample, we have to estimate the maximum size. As you see, we have good size that can be even higher than 19 millimeters. Hence, we are going to use the method C. The method C. For that method, we are going to need materials such as the sieve. This sieve of 19 millimeter is important so that you can sieve the material and reach the allowable size. We have here two types of ramas. We have this rama is used for the standard compaction effort, which is around 600 kilonewton meter per meter square. For the modified compaction effort, we are going to use this rama this, this is used to use the compaction effort of 2,700 kilonewton meter per meter cube. It means we have different masses of ramas. This rama uh, weights around 4.5 kgs. It has a falling height of around four, uh, 45 centimeter, whereas this one for the standard effort, we have a mass of around 2.5 kgs and a falling height of around 30 centimeters. The standard one 
is going to be used to uh, produce a compaction in a effort of uh, 600 kilonewton meter per meter cube, whereas the modified one is going to give us a compaction effort of around 2,700 kilonewton meter per meter cube. We are going to use different layers. We are not going to put the soil at once and then compact it immediately. We are going to compact layer by layer. For the standard one, we are going to use three layers, whereas for the modified one, we are going to use the five layers. We prefer to use the method C, and we are going to perform the modified compaction test. For the modified compaction test, the first thing we are going to do is to prepare our sample, and then we are going to prepare our tools for recording the data. For preparing sample, we are going to screen the material. Why? He is screening. Why he is screening? We are go I'm going to take the mass of this small and the mass of this pans, we are going to use them. We are going to use them and we are going to see how we are going to need them. He's screening and me, I'm going to take the mass of this mold. First of all, I have to put the balance at zero and then I take the mass the mass is going to be recorded in the form. We need to perform four tests. That's why we are going to record the molds for the four tests. And we record them here. We have to determine the volume of the molds we are going to use, taking the diameter times the height, a diameter squared times pi over four, and then times the height here in the form. We have to multiply by the height. As you see, this small has a collar. The collar is important because we are going to compact by layers. We are going to have an excess height. So, for measuring, we have to take the mass without cora. After taking the mass of the molds, we are going to take the mass of the pans. We need the pans, why? Because, as we are going to see, we are going to determine the moisture content. For the determination of the moisture content, we are, we are going to need those pans. And since we are going to perform four tests, I'm going also to weigh four pans, one up to four. This one. And this one. This one, then three, and then this one. Now, the sample is prepared, and the molds are weighed. So, 
we can now start by compacting. But as you know, you can neither compact a dust nor compact a, a wetland. There is a water content on which we are going to reach the best compaction. And the most target and the importance of this test is also to determine that moisture content. That's why we are going to do the tests with the different water contents or moisture contents. And from that, we are going to calculate the densities after compaction. And from, we are going at the end to plot the density and moisture content graph. And from there, we are going to see where is the optimum, it means the best moisture content, the optimum moisture content on which we can compact. And we are going to see how much is the density we are going to expect from the compaction. We have, first of all, to be able to see the soil and see the expected, the expected optimum moisture content because it has to be between. So, for example, this one I see is a low plastic clay silt. With this soil, we expect the optimum of around 18 or 19 from the experience. So since we have, we have to conduct four tests, we are going to start by 16%, and then you continue by with 18, 20, 22, and 24. So now, we have First of all, to see how much sample do we have. And the, these particles, which is, which is a 10 or 19 millimeter sieve, those are called the oversize. The oversize, the oversize may be considered also. It is important to consider the oversize, because sometimes you are going to find out, for example, in road construction where they do the so-called degree of compaction, they say they got a degree of compaction of 120%. One of the source of that error is when we perform the test with those fine particles, and the one on site is going to determine the, dance, the density considering the material as it is. So we are going to consider the oversize, and then we are going to correct the values so that we may meet, we may meet the requirements. So now we have to weigh the oversize, the mass of the oversize. First of all, we, took, we take the pan. We know the oversize, and we have also to weigh the remaining material. Since the balance is not so high, we are going to weigh it uh, in rounds. Two times zero. And we are going to add. So, start by that. For this test, we will need around 24 kgs. Six, eight, six, okay. So it means we have 
zero two kgs, and when we add to two twenty eight, it means the total is the fines and the oversize. For this sample, we have a dry material. It is dried. Sometimes it may come being wet. In that case, we have to determine the moisture content from the cost of the oversize and the moisture content for the fines. But since this one is dried, the moisture content for both is zero. Now, for calculating the oversize, we are going to take the mass of this, which is 2.88. We divide by the total mass, which is uh, 24, uh, 26.88, we get around 12% uh, oversize. We have the sample to be used, and we, get, we got the weight of the pans and molds and volumes. Now, we are going to perform the compaction. 